Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Transformed Lives program. My name is John Jimmy Musimbi standing in for Adrian Austin Mukalazi and Dr. Robert Rutaji. Now my guest tonight is an interesting one. Uh, his story starts from Ruchiga district to the capital Kampala and now to North Chigezi Diocese in Irokunjiri district. I am talking about arguably the only lay chaplain in the history of the global Anglican communion. Welcome to Church of Uganda Family TV Transformed Lives program, Bishop. Thank you very much uh, for hosting me and greetings to the viewers. Well, uh, as you've seen, he's the right Reverend uh, Bishop Onesmas Asim with the newly consecrated uh, sixth Bishop of North Chigezi. Uh, I'm sure everybody what's on their lips out there is wondering uh, who is, of course many know who you are, but they do not know that fantastic story that is attached to you as a person. Uh, growing up, how was life like? What kind of family uh, did you get raised from? I was born and raised in a family of 11 siblings, all by the same father, same mother. And I'm the 11th born. So it was uh, a complete soccer team, uh, football team, and myself being the goalkeeper. <laughs> because after me, my parents could not score any more goals. My father was a lay pastor, a catechist in the Church of Uganda handling a congregation and uh, he served in very many churches so I was born and raised in church I'm a church boy and um, my father my mother too was a, a devout believer she was very instrumental in forming my character right from childhood. Because of her input, I grew up hating evil, hating sin. I never knew what it meant to steal, to take something that does not belong to you. I wasn't actually saved. I had not given my life to the Lord yet. But I hated sin. I couldn't touch alcohol or a cigarette or anything like that, which I saw my contemporaries do as we grew up. Mm -hmm. So it was a humble background. I grew up uh, a deprived boy. I didn't have enough scholastic materials which I needed in school. I went to school and I would walk about um, four kilometers on barefoot, no shoes. And Ruchiga is a, a very cold place, Kabale generally, very cold place. Because it's raised, um, the terrain, the geographical uh, formation is raised as a highland and so naturally it's cold. I can surely relate with walking barefoot in such a terrain. And absolutely. And yeah, absolutely. It must have been yeah, I, I lost almost all my toes. I the ones I have a uh, uh, secondary, not primary. <laughs> <laughs> And um, the Lord has been faithful. We but the Lord, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I don't wear open shoes <laughs> because I would hit uh, the stones, and uh, so it, hard life, really. Uh, reading on a, a, a local, reading using a local candle, a local candle. In my language, we call it a tadova. Local. One would actually imagine that having been the last born, 
Uh, you were so lucky to be the mommy and daddy's boy receiving everything. And of course, maybe uh, there are some people in the family who could have made it and been there for you. That doesn't seem to be the case with you. Yeah, to some extent, true. I was uh, my father's blue-eyed boy. And uh, uh, I was a spoiled child, really. My mother would not allow me to go in the gardens to dig. My elder brothers did that. My sisters did the cooking. So up to now, I, it's a shame. I, I do not know how to cook. If The only thing I can cook is tea. I can cook tea. I can also boil eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so on Women's Day, there must have been a trouble. Uh, we at we home. improvise. There's a way in which we improvise. Yeah. <laughs> so that is my life. Um, later on, after my primary education. So I just want to know before we close to even after primary. Yes. How were you able to afford the tuition to ensure that you had a successful uh, primary seven? Uh, was the performance satisfactory to take you to the secondary school of your choice? How was that? I performed very well. I, I was um, a very intelligent young man. I, from home, my father took me to do an interview for primary one in Changa Boys School. And my head teacher said, Musha Mesa, church teacher, your son is too bright for primary one. So I joined primary two. I've never, never smelled, never, studied, never, studied never, never been in the inside of a, a classroom. So I, I never, I don't, I, I never studied P1, primary one. I don't know what it means to be on, in the, on the inside of primary <laughs> one classroom. So I was, I was quite intelligent. So at PLE, at the primary living examinations, I passed very successfully and joined Kigez High School because we loved the school. My brother had gone to Kigez High School and used to tell a lot of stories. I could have joined any other school because uh, I had passed highly. So I was admitted, but of course, we were paying school fees then, as we still do today. Now, my, that's where my sister comes in. Our eldest sister, who was privileged to go to school because in her time uh, most parents would not educate their, their daughters. Yeah, true. Saying what's the use of investing in someone who is going to get married to some other man. But because of the East African revival and my father being a beneficiary, he sent her to school. There's an age difference of 22 years between me and my sister. So by the time I joined senior one in Kigez High School, she was already a graduate. She was working and she was able to uh, now come in, intervene and pay the fees until senior six. So, so general life wasn't so hard for you to afford basics in school for secondary. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, I got what I needed. Kigeza High School had uh, a very well stocked library. So I was able to read the textbooks that I missed in primary. And um, I, from Kigeza High School, after senior four, I joined Makere College School. Which um, combination? Did you choose to I, take I, there? I, my talent, my gifts, my skills that I was born with are in a subject called fine art. I am wired for art, yes. I'm wired for art. So uh, that was actually my best subject, fine art, English, 
and uh, geography. So your combination included fine art. Fine art, geography, literature, okay. and um, I enjoyed my. Literature, uh, uh, which explains the good English. Well, yeah. uh, you're very kind. I see the roots. You're, you're a gracious <laughs> man. Um, so, but going back to senior two, when I was in senior two, sadly, I lost my mother. She died of uh, cardiac failure at Mulago Hospital. Sad. And uh, being the last born, with a special attachment to my mother, yeah. I felt that God was unfair to take my mother at a juvenile age. Mm -hmm. So I was angry with God, and I turned my back on him. I said, this God does not love me. Because if he loved me, he would not have taken my mother. And I went wild. I went on the rampage and uh, got involved in wrong company. I learned how to smoke. And I smoked all kinds of nicotine, from the local tobacco to uh, sportsman, Rex, sweet menthol, Dan Hill, the cigar, I don't know if I'd mentioned Rothmans, all kinds of cigarettes. I smoked. Was Dan aware when these things were happening? No, he wasn't. I was um, very uh, subtle. I had, I had two images. It's an image I gave to my father. And the bad and boy the, side. That drew me mm -hmm. at school. So holidays, I am an angel. School time, I am a devil, uh, truth be told. So, how I learned how to, to, to drink alcohol. Mm. In fact, I started on uh, a, a local gin, Waragi. My first drink, one. yes, my first alcoholic drink was waragi. And if you if you start on waragi, then these are the things like beer, um, there are nothing. You need to drink a lot of beer. They easily come along. To to yes to to, to become high, you know. So I I, I went wild. I was also. Yeah, you know, young, tall, dark, and handsome, and I attracted a few girls, and um, and then I was notorious for for dancing. Mm. I used to spend my my holidays. The latest dance yeah, stars. Were. Yeah, the, <laughs> my holidays. I would spend them in Kampala mm. with my sister, the, the sister I, I, I alluded to. Mm. I so watching television. And uh, seeing all the dancing what styles. What were some of those favorite dance styles that you Oh, could... well, my time was uh, the time of Michael Jackson. <laughs> and he was my icon. Mm. Michael Jackson. And I used to dance like him. Uh, you know, break dance. Break dance from mm. the head to, to you know, to <laughs> spin around time. <laughs> and mm -hmm. believe you me, I was arguably the best dancer mm -hmm. at school, both Kigez High School and Makere College School. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, my nickname was DJ, Disc Jockey. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I would entertain students. Mm -hmm. I would entertain students on the dancing floor. And your sister never got to know about no, this no, as no, well? No, no, no. No, all this is done you know, behind in my private scenes. life, yes, behind the scenes. So, now, in my VAC, that's senior four? Oh, senior six. Okay. I am at home in my cousin's house. 
So which means this went on from senior two up to the end of to the end of senior six. six. Yes. I wasted away my potential. I started performing poorly. I, in a nutshell, I became a hopeless specimen. Hopeless specimen. But on the 8th of January, 1988, I was alone in the house, half dead with a hangover. I had drunk myself silly the previous night. So I am nursing a hangover. And as it were, there is a cigarette dangling between my fingers when I heard the voice of God. The voice of God. And he was asking me a, a question. And the question was, Onesimus. That is, that's how God calls me. That's the name he uses. Onesimus. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? Audibly. Audibly. Did that come in a vision? How was that like? If you could paint a picture for us, I can relate and imagine. No? I know, I know. It's very hard to explain. Spiritual things are very hard to explain. These are mysteries. But, but I want you to understand that I never used to go to church. I quit oh, God I, from the time of losing my mother. When I turned my back on God, I quit church, I quit prayer, I quit reading the Bible. So now, I really have nothing to do with God at this time. But I hear the voice. Now, I used the word audibly. Because that's what it is. I cannot understand whether I use the physical ears or the spiritual ears. But one thing I know, I had. Because I was able to understand that somebody has spoken to me. Yeah. Now, at first I thought that some gentleman some gentleman came in the house and spoke and left. Oh, so you mistook that. Maybe so I looked, him. I looked around. Uh, there was nobody. But I wasn't convinced that there was nobody. Yeah. So I went out of the house and moved around in the compound. I'm being very honest with you. There was nobody. And then somehow, deep within my heart, I have this conviction that this must be God. And my body, physically, is uh, unrestful, I'm kind of shaking, you know, I'm shaking and trembling. I, my, I had such a trembling or sh shaking because of drinking, by the way. Um, at that young age, I, I'm talking about age 20. That was so young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I would not hold a glass firmly. If I overfilled it with water or some other drink, some of it would pour as I'm trying to drink. At that age, that's how serious it was. My nails were brown, yellowish brown because of the smoke of the cigarette. Mm -hmm. I'm sure also my lungs were definitely um, coated with some smoke. Mm -hmm. So as the body shakes, I, f I hear again, the voice saying, throw away the cigarette. Oh, so all that happened while well, it was still between your it, fingers. It was that dramatic. Interesting. But because I loved my cigarette, I said, no way, 
No, there's no way I can throw it away without finishing. So I said, Lord, this is your voice. And I am going to get born again. I'm going to get saved. I think that's what I'm going to get saved. But please allow me to finish this cigarette first. And then I give you my life. So I smoked on. Now I don't know whether he allowed me or not, but I smoked on anyway. Until it completely Until got I was almost uh, burning, burning the, the bat. <laughs> I remember I would inhale a lot of smoke, retain it in my lungs for some time, push it out through the nose and mouth, because I knew that was my last cigarette. And indeed it was. After smoking, I sat on the floor and asked Jesus to save me. Without inviting Without, any there, was, there was there uh, was no <clears throat> no there was no midwife. <laughs> was I love your choice of yeah. words. <laughs> well, thank you. And um, I, that's how I gave my life to the Lord. The rest is history. Now, what is interesting is uh, two things happened instantly. Number one, the burden of sin I carried. Now, make no mistake about this. Some people will give you the impression that they do sin without any conviction. That's not true. I had a big burden of sin. That you carried with That you. I was carried, yeah, carrying for all those years. And suddenly, the burden lifted. Instantly. I felt like if I died now, I would go straight to heaven. That same moment yes. you had yes. given your life yes. to Christ. Yes. Number two, because of excessive drinking and many times going without food, mm. I had developed stomach ulcers and I got healed instantly. With the ulcers? Yes. I have to date? To date, 33 years down the road. This is interesting. I've never suffered from ulcers. The I, God I of Onesmus indeed works. I eat anything, I drink anything. My mm. stomach is international. Wherever <laughs> I go, I eat whatever they said before me. <laughs> so, this is a testimony really people are From the word go, mm. I knew that this Jesus, we serve, mm. forgives sins, and heals diseases. And I later on discovered these things in the scriptures. Mm. That's Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He who heals all diseases, forgives all sins. So he forgives all sins and heals all diseases. There's nothing like this disease is curable. This one is impossible. No. No, 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 no. Um, a number of words don't exist in God's dictionary. Mm. One of them is impossible. Yeah, true. The other one is oops. <laughs> God is never overtaken by events. Mm. So that was that was remarkable. Uh, and that formed we and that formed we're talking about nineteen eighty eight. Okay. And and that formed my ministry foundation. And I've run with that ever since. I, I preach the gospel of salvation, I pray for the sick, and I've seen miracles. Um, including <clears throat> some young man who was blind. I prayed for him, Henry Mijisha is his name. That's, that's a story that could take another one hour. But I prayed for him together with a few friends and the Lord restored his sight instantly. Now, the other scripture I needed to share 
is First um, Corinthians six nineteen. When I was giving my testimony about two weeks after my conversion, somebody said, "Wait a minute, that sounds like a scripture." And we discovered it was uh, in the Bible. The question that the Lord asked me, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? I was a, a very good worldly debater. I nice. used to argue quite a lot. I remember asking my brother who was and is still a priest. He used to challenge me about smoking and drinking habits. One day I said to him, if you ever show me in the Bible, a commandment prohibiting smoking. If you ever show me a scripture which says, thou shalt not smoke, mm. then I will quit smoking. So now, the Lord was telling me, the smoking which destroys your lungs, the nicotine, because there's that acid, mm. nicotinic acid, the drinking which was wasting away my body, destroying my liver, and... Uh, other organs I was destroying his temple my yeah. body is the temple of God of the Holy Spirit actually he says do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells who lives in you and so since then I've given him my body it has been his temple I've never touched a cigarette then yeah. uh, since then I've never touched uh, alcohol since then, I have never touched a woman who is not my wife. So we are talking of God's power that transforms someone like me. Mm. If you can picture that kind of life yeah, I lived sure. to being what I am now. You finish Senior 6. How is the universe like? Do you directly go to pursue uh, theology or you begin with something else until the time the conviction comes again that now you can go and serve the people of God this way I my life turned around the, the my conversion my encounter with the Lord uh, was a turning point for me because uh, I had not performed particularly well at A level and I hated something called teaching. It's not something I ever thought I would do in my life to be a teacher, a secondary school teacher. I hated it with a passion. But after A6, the only course available for me according to my performance was a diploma in education because uh, we are talking of one university in Uganda then, Makere University, so it was very hard uh, to absorb everybody. everybody. It would have, it's a lot easier now to, because there are so many universities. So I, I joined NTC, National Teachers College, Kabale, and uh, because now I was born again, my focus is on studies. I performed very well. I was a top scholar and uh, I was on the strength of my performance. I was admitted for a bachelor's degree of Makerere University, um, which I also did very well. But in between there, I met some young lady, and this is how it happened. I had gone to preach at Sesame Girls School, and uh, I was preaching from a platform. Now, also given my height, uh, this was like a vantage point of looking at every face. 500 strong girls and uh, one face stood out <laughs> and she was not only the most beautiful she was also the head girl of the school, of the school. Wow. and later that day she made the mistake of coming to help preachers 
you know how these young ladies they come mm. how they come to help uh, the ministers wash hands with warm water and they're kneeling and and I kept looking at her and uh, three years down the road she became Mrs. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some of the uh, benefits of preaching the gospel. She must have really had the qualities you wanted. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Within that time, oh, oh, yes. second oh, yeah. Her. Oh, even if I, I was to remarry uh, and given a choice to, to you know, still select, I would her. still marry her. So for the last 29 years, she's been very supportive she understands my vision and my scope of ministry, the context in which I minister. We, fast forward, I, ever since I gave my life to the Lord, my passion was to preach the gospel. And, so uh, where then does your journey for ministry begin from you? It, it, university? it started the day I gave my life to the Lord because it was a Friday and Sunday I gave a testimony in church of my conversion. I could see some ladies crying tears. I didn't know how to make an altar call then. The news went around. I was invited to preach at the secondary school the following Sunday. I preached on uh, from uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, the head boy gave his life to the Lord and two girls. I knew that God had called day. me yeah. to reach out. His spirit was yes, yes. And, and, and there were many men and women that I admired, messengers of, of God, people who would come to proclaim the, the heralds of uh, you know, the oracles, so the heralds um, that would proclaim the oracles of God. They were great evangelists, some of them unschooled, but very effective. I remember a, a woman called um, uh, Jolena Mufuko, never been to school. She would not even read the Bible. Uh, they, they were the likes of um, now top, top, top notch Bishop Festo Chibenjere, who I admired. Um, his eloquence, his preaching, his looks was very neat and, and uh, gentle spirited. He was actually spot on. Yes. Like you are. Well, I think you're generous with your words, but uh, I, I, I take the compliment. But, but his standard was so high. Uh, we saw men like Zaribu Jire Abraham who inspired me greatly, whether they were aware or not. And so I felt like I was now walking in their footsteps. So I didn't wait to do any theological training. Um, I didn't need anybody to teach me things in order to preach. The Lord himself was instructing was me. With you, yeah. Yes, and I was seeing results. And then later that year, I received a team from Makere University that now I joined. They called themselves the Kigezi Anglican Youth Missioners. Okay. And I started preaching with them. We would go out every weekend to minister to some church somewhere. And there is no, there is no parish in the Diocese of Kigezi that... I have not been to. What really pushed um, you? You seem to have been so devoted beyond measure. It's a calling. This is a calling. I am an evangelist by calling. So it's a gift. I see. And, and when God equips you, when God gives you a gift, He creates divine opportunities for you to deploy, to put to use the gifting. And how do you know it's a gift? You do it with ease. Yeah. You do it with ease. And you see results. I, I, now this sounds like I'm bragging, but, but I say it in humility. 
I don't remember any single altar call I have made and nobody walks forward to receive Jesus. So that gave me encouragement to preach on and on. So throughout my studies at college, at university, I was preaching the gospel. So my calling is subtle. My calling into ministry, you can't, you can't say, you know, I, I, I started at a specific time because of training. No, 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 no. Um, later, I was called uh, by Archbishop Livingstone Koyoyo to join him in ministry. But this is how it happened. I was very enthusiastic, and my quest for God was unquenchable. And in my search, in my search for God, I wandered in several places. You know, when you are thirsty, uh, like a deer uh, pants for water, you will not rest until you have found the water to drink. So in my quest trying to explore, you know, to try A, B, C, D. If the scripture has said this, I must do it. If this, I started doing, I think what sounded um, like um, incompatible, things that sounded incompatible with the normal and traditional practices of the Church of Uganda then. They're not anymore, but then they were. Okay. I'm talking about healing, I'm talking about deliverance, casting out demons from people. Okay. And somehow this ministry put me in trouble. <laughs> because I was, I was, I was somehow misunderstood. Um, By the public. Yeah, uh, there were questions like, where do you get authority to cast out demons? I said, That's where before I said, you even joined uh, I was just a, I was a teacher, high school teacher. Mm. Where do you get power and authority to pray for the sick? You're not ordained. Who gave you authority to lay hands on the sick? I think you know, was, such, such questions. Such questions. Yeah, tradition, tradition, because these were not normal practices. Yeah, sure. uh, a, a young man, you're not ordained, and you're praying for the sick, you are casting out demons. Um, so that kind of put me in trouble there was also a colleague of mine who now took it further and baptized some young people who had already been baptized. I never baptized any, I never, I never, I never baptized, immersed any then. No, 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 no. But because he was my colleague, I was also held responsible. So anyway, the long and short of the story at some point, I had to leave the Anglican Church and uh, came to Kampala and, and started, uh, planted a church, uh, which we called Cornerstone Healing Center. Was that uh, before Archbishop Koyo calling you or after? That was before. Okay. So, uh, you know, bless him, he heard of my story and he, I remember he called me um, to his home in Amirembe. He called me and sat me down for two hours. Two hours. And this is what he told me. He said, Onesimus, you're a young man. God has given you gifts. Now, if we keep 
losing gifted young people from the Anglican Church to other churches, what is the future of the Church of Uganda? What is the future? That's a very pertinent question. Oh, yes. Oh, he was very visionary. So he said, I want you to come back to your mother church. I want you to bring these gifts in our church because we need healing, we need deliverance, we need power ministries. And I said, this is it. This, this is what I have longed for. The, the Lord is my witness. I never, ever thought of leaving the Anglican Church. Never. 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 I was forced out. Because my intention was, let's, let's minister to these young people. Let us um, give them an environment of ministry. You know young people, hot-blooded, they have a lot of energy. Yeah. They want to praise, they want to shout, they want to sing. Let's minister to them. Let them get filled with the Holy Spirit so that they don't see any need of going to a Pentecostal church. Because there had been uh, a, a big exodus of young people going to other churches in search of these power ministries. And yet, God had given us the same gifts, the same Holy Spirit. There is no single church, there's no single denomination that can claim a monopoly of God's power. It has pleased God to give his spirit and, and, and uh, you know, Release his spirit on all flesh. We are, living, we are living in the days of the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. So if you hear of these churches, Holy Spirit, fire something, church uh, in, in Nigeria, there is a church called the Helicopters of Christ. When you hear of all these things, these are just names. The Holy Spirit is alive and well in the Church of Uganda, and we have seen all this. So, so Archbishop Nkoyo actually said, I want you, at, at first he said, you and I, meaning himself and me, should, should uh, masquerade, go to Watoto, which was called uh, KPC then, go to Miracle Center, and his question was, let us, what takes these young people to those churches that we do not have. Wow. Why, should, why should young people live a magnificent building like St. Paul's Cathedral in Amirembe and go to a, a church built with papyrus reeds? So find out. Of course, he wouldn't go as, a, as an archbishop. There's, an archbishop can't masquerade. They would yeah, still find sure. out. But I, I would go find out, and, and of course, uh, it was very easy to know, music, contemporary music, mm. uh, freedom of worship. And so anyway, the long and short of the story, I quit that church and that I had started. Home. Yes, some were disappointed. Maybe they are still disappointed. <laughs> but the Lord spoke to me and said, your future is in the Anglican Church. Spoke to me. This we are talking of the year two thousand, and um, so I came back. I was reinstated um, by Bishop George uh, CJ in Chigeze Diocese. He reinstated me. He held a special service. Um, I went back into uh, teaching at Gaze High School. Uh, just just like. To, to now formalize, and then uh, I left, joined uh, the Archbishop in the Provincial Secretariat in Amirembe, 2003, 2004, 2005. We are doing healing, deliverance, prayer. I was the first program officer 
and we held conferences in Western Uganda, in Eastern Uganda, in Northern Uganda, uh, training clergy and lay people, especially those with the uh, passion and, and gifting of, of uh, healing and deliverance and prayer. And churches were revived. Now as we speak, if you talk of deliverance, it is a normal thing in the Church of Uganda. In fact, the Archbishop himself in his church uh, makes an appeal, a clarion call for deliverance and, and healing services. I hope churches are implementing the Archbishop's uh, church. Um, so, 2006, 2006 yeah. Archbishop Orombi says, I would like you to be my chaplain. Now, that was hard because I was a layman. So I struggled with it and said, but Your Grace, I'm a layman. He said, I know. He said, I know. You think I don't know? I know. But I am not looking for the caller. I'm looking for the man on, on the inside. Wow. So I lost the argument uh, because when a king instructs you to jump, you can only say how high. <laughs> so I started, I started carrying the Archbishop's crozier and um, in a necktie. <laughs> Very strange. But he said, I want to mentor you we had met earlier in 1997, that's, that's a long story. But he said, I want to mentor you, I want to give you exposure. I want to empty myself into you, pour myself into you, replicate myself in you. And wherever he went, he would invite me to go with him, both within the country and abroad. And uh, one day, he kept saying, one of these days, you're going to wake up and find a collar around your neck. <laughs> no, I thought these are just his words. I would actually laugh it off. But in 2009, because he was now drawing close his retirement, uh, he brought forms for me to fill from uh, Uganda Christian University, the school of... Uh, Divinity and Theology, Bishop Taka School of Divinity and Theology. And he said, fill these forms, take them to the dean of the school on Monday. It was a Friday. So I had no choice again. Yeah. yeah, It was not like, go pray about this. Have you ever thought about the nation? Have you not? <laughs> fill these forms and uh, take them to the, to the dean of the school. And that's what I did and I enrolled for a Master's of uh, Divinity, um, got the requirements for ordination. I got ordained 2011, uh, 2012, priesthood, and then he retired, true to his word. Um, then after, um, now all this time I've been serving him as a chaplain, and um, to, 2013, when we get a new archbishop, I asked if I could do some other assignment. Okay. And he appointed me the coordinator or director for the Youth Church of Uganda with about 7 million constituents. Wow, that's now after priesthood, of course. Now you're a servant clergy. That's right. Uh, so you served at the province. Did you ever... Uh, come back home in Chigezi to serve in the diocese or throughout you under the diocese of Kampala? I was, uh, I am a priest originally of uh, the diocese of Kigezi because that's where I got ordained. Okay. Um, but because of the nature of work I was doing at the province, at the province yeah, yeah, so I was. Um, um, attached, you know, to the Diocese of Kampala, but so uh, canonically resident. Kampala, in, uh, you were at the province doing some work. How do you get to uh, St. Francis, which I think uh, popularized you the most, and then to yesterday? As a youth worker, we, something I did with passion, because me, I am a pastor of young people. 
I'm, I'm a youth pastor. Because of what I went through in my life, I identify with them. When I see someone struggling with, with smoking, with his habits, with the addictions, I identify with them. And I'm very patient with them. And I've seen many get transformed. I, I'm not sure about being popularized by St. Francis Chapel. I think my, one of my most effective ministries actually was when I was serving as the director of youth. Because we went to all the dioceses, mobilizing young people. Uh, you know, the Lord said, now, your vision is the mobilization of youth and students' power, youth and students' power for the end time thrust of the Great Commission. I started mobilizing young people and equipping them to preach the gospel because they're energetic. You know, most of the ministry I did of evangelism, I was walking. I would walk 21 kilometers. I would carry my bag. Yes, yes, ride a bicycle. There's what young people can do that old men and old women can't. So, so then I, the Lord gave me the vision of bringing all those youth together in a convention. We, the first one was 2015, to bring all youth, youth from all dioceses, Karamoja, Mahabura, Kanungu, Buganda region. For the first time, we gathered uh, in Mengo SS, and the Lord spoke and equipped them. Many youth were filled with power. They went back and evangelized the, their villages. And um, that has now become a very popular tool, PESCO, Provincial Annual Youth and Students Convention, for the Church of Uganda, especially in mobilizing and equipping young people, helping them to identify their gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and uh, helping them to understand that they do not have to be spectators, but participators in the church. They are involved, they are on, on councils, parish councils, they are in the synod, they are, they, are, they are evangelists, they are on mission committees. And for me, that gives me peace. Wow, and and it's a fulfillment of a so dream. After that? So after that, uh, I am invited to be the chaplain of St. Francis Chapel, Macquarie University. And I started on the 11th of January, 2017. And I served there for five years until this new calling came my way. Wow, uh, you've been elected bishop, but our time is fast spent. Uh, in just about a minute, could you highlight about some of your biggest achievements that uh, you feel you've left out? And people should remember you surely for this, uh, these initiatives. I am not going to talk about achievements. If you ever hear someone spending an hour talking about achievements, most likely they have, they have no achievements at all. <laughs> Let the people you lead say he has achieved A, B, C, D. I will, I will instead tell you where I'm heading now. Okay. My vision is to see revival in North Kigese Diocese. And having studied church history and the history of revivals, I know that there is no revival that is not preceded by prayer. And so my clarion call is for people to pray. And we're going to do this. We're going to get into the house but we shall mobilize churches for prayer. It starts with an individual, but I'm talking of corporate prayer. Churches coming together to pray that the Lord will do a new thing in this diocese. And when we've done that, when we have prayed, when there is revival, 
there's reconciliation, unity, there's peace, there is forgiveness. You know, people now are repenting of sins. Then we will see other things come. The cathedral is going to be built to become a magnificent house of God. We will see schools revamped. Some of them are in the sorry state now. We will see the household income rise. The, even the, the, the pay, the, the salaries of, of, of the staff will increase. But then first things first. Uh, that is my principle. First things first. First Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Look at, look at me, the way I am dressed now. This morning I woke up, took a shower, and then I put on a vest. On top of the vest is shirt. This is the second day I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, then then a, a collar and a pectoral cross and a jacket. That's the order. Wow. That's the order. But listen, suppose I had put on a, if I, after waking up, I put on a jacket, on top of the jacket, a shirt, on top of the shirt, a vest, and then, then a shower. What would you have thought of me as you came to interview me? You would think this man, this man is mad. Mentally derailed. So, so people miss it. When, when they talk of development, development, even sometimes giving the impression that you're going to do, you're going to do, you, you know, uh, what no one else has done, you're going to. No, 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 no. Which is impossible. Uh, so we will seek the Lord. We will do the ministry. Jesus' mission was threefold, teaching, preaching, and healing. That's God's mission. There is no other mission other than the mission of God. Well, thank you so much. As we've really had, it's been a good journey and of course highlighting on what you intend to do. I cannot let you go without praying for our viewers on Church of Uganda Family TV. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for every viewer. Thank you that you have enabled them to tune in. Some perhaps uh, stumbled on this channel but they have been blessed by my story and Lord I pray that they will understand that what you have done for me you can do for them you are the God who transforms human beings and human beings coming together transform communities I pray that you will meet this person at their various points of need. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, bring peace and restore hope to someone who is hopeless. I pray that you will visit somebody in their dreams and visions and reveal yourself as God, as the savior of the world. And Father, bring somebody to salvation even right now. And may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. May that blessing be your portion on a daily basis. And may that blessing bring to fruition all your dreams, prospects, and aspirations. And may that blessing go ahead of you always to scatter the darkness from before your path and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for making time to speak to Church of Uganda Family TV and I hope uh, you have been enriched surely by this rich story such that you can turn around your life with Jesus Christ. Now, I do appreciate my camera person, Ate Jeka Brinko, and of course the production uh, head, that's Mr. Mwebembezi Ijonan. Until next time, good night. <laughs>